Last week, about four or five former defence ministers in the Commons stood up and said we need 2% for defence minimum. The Chiefs of Staff have been implying that they haven't got enough, so it's about time we saw them actually represent the services that they are meant to represent and actually say, look, we've got to have 2% for defence. But actually, I think 2%, I don't like a figure of 2%. I like actually saying what we require, we should get. Why do we need it? What do we need defence for? What do we need defence for? Yeah. Just look around the world, Adam. Look at the problems we've got. We've got Russians increasing their defence expenditure. We've got Ukraine occurring. We've got goodness knows what's happening in the Middle East. We just don't know the future. That's what we need defence for, because it's the first duty of government. But, uh, as has been clear, people don't see the solution as being going to war in the Middle East or indeed going to war against Russia. Everyone's afraid of that. So if we're not going to do it, why waste money preparing for it? Well, it's not a question of um, what we want to do is to deter. We want actually to stop things. If we don't have it, we can't actually deter anything. A deterrence in includes not just an independent nuclear deterrence, but strong ground forces and air forces and the Navy. But with all due respect, isn't the real problem with uh, your Conservative leader and indeed the Chancellor who are do dodging round, even committing to this NATO target of 2% spending in the years ahead? The Prime Minister asked every NATO nation to commit to 2% last autumn. We should commit to 2% now, and I'd like to see that actually formally put into the Conservative manifesto. But it's not there at the moment, so shouldn't it in fact be people like you thinking of resigning in protest that your own leader not being prepared to put his money where I don't is? see that that is beyond the realm of possibility. The Defence Committee has said we require 2%. They are all parties in the Defence Committee. We think 2% is crucial. And many people, not just on my side of the House in the House of Commons, but also on the, in the, op on the opposition side, think 2% is minimum. So how can you therefore stand for election if this isn't in the manifesto as a Conservative? Well, it is in mine. I put it on my pamphlets that I stand for strong defence. And actually the vast majority of Conservative MPs want strong defence, and that means 2%. In a sense, many people felt that uh, when the Cold War ended that there would be a peace dividend, uh, instead of which we, as you say, have had these upheavals in the Middle East and currently in Europe as well. But it seems that uh, the politicians, because of the economic austerity, the consequences, the credit crunch, don't want to move away from that idea. That's right. Well, we thought we'd get a peace dividend, did we, after the end of the Cold War? Well, we haven't. We've got a more dangerous world than we've ever had and we cut our defence at our peril, and we shouldn't do. Now, what, given that the choices have to be hard, that there isn't infinite money, should we continue with the nuclear deterrent as part of that? With Absolutely. Biden? Look, we guaranteed the sovereignty of Ukraine in 1994 with the Russians and with the Americans and with the Ukrainian government. We said if you actually give up the one-third of the nuclear arsenal you have from Soviet times, we will guarantee your sovereignty. They gave up their nuclear arsenal. And look what's happened. Would the Russians be playing around in eastern Ukraine as much as they are now if Ukraine had nuclear weapons? Perhaps not. What do you think we should do now about uh, Ukraine? The situation there continues. Uh, Crimea has uh, been annexed by Russia. They continue to back forces occupying much of eastern Ukraine. Ukraine is not in NATO. The republics in the Baltic are, so is Poland, and therefore we have to say these are NATO countries, we will guarantee. And we actually should consider whether we put some troops into the Baltic republics and possibly Poland just to prove it. Like I was for many years in Germany and in Berlin, we were a tripwire just to prove the point. You cannot actually invade NATO territory. Unfortunately, or fortunately perhaps, Ukraine is not in NATO. We cannot do very much about it militarily. Of course, politically, we'll do our best. Colonel Bob Stewart, thank you very much.